right, so welcome, welcome everybody. Happy Thursday, stormy Thursday. Um, tonight's class, the focus is on Ustrasana, camel pose. And the subtext of the class is faith. <laughs> what the camels have to do with faith. Um, the thought is that, you know, that's been resonating with me lately is you think about camels, right? They're a desert animal. And this concept that they are built so perfectly for their environment, right? Is, you know, they're, you look at them and they're very weird looking, but they are perfectly built for their environment. So the humps are designed to help them navigate a area or a landscape where water is not guaranteed, right? Resources are not guaranteed. So they carry them within themselves. Right, their eyelashes are the way they are, their feet are the way they are, everything is the way that it is, so that they can carry everything that they need within themselves. Right, that the environment outside of them almost doesn't matter, right? That they can be in that stark landscape of a desert and they have everything that they need. Right, so this is the basis in yoga of what we call real faith, because it's an acknowledgement that everything that we truly need to navigate anything that's in front of us is we already have it right? We already were born with it is that we are perfectly suited to the life that we're living. And our practice and really the experience of growth or development is to unravel or unfold all of those skills and all of that ability that is hidden within, right? You're carrying it around with you all the time. And just like you can carry around your challenges, your suffering, your everything else, you can carry that like a weight, like a big hump on your back. <laughs> or you can go into this experience of the openness and camel pose is a big back bend if you're not thinking of what it is. So it's a big heart opening pose, but it's an opening that comes from the inside out, right? Not the outside forces us open, but from the inside, we expand. From the inside, we open to embrace. From the inside, we become more available. So whatever is within us, we access it, right? But the idea of the camel being this faith animal, right? That it is perfectly suited to its environment. You are perfectly suited to the life that you're living. Everything that you need, you already carry inside. So camel pose, you can think of it as a heart opening pose that it's an unlocking or revealing of those abilities or those skills or those traits or that faith that is maybe deeply rooted, deeply buried, finding its way out, right? So find a comfortable seat if you're not there already. Let the eyes close. <clears throat> Just for a moment, breathe very deep all the way down into the base of your spine and imagine there that there are actual roots, actual roots. You can have them be roots that are made of light. You can have them look like they are roots that are actually tree roots, but roots that are growing down from the base of your spine out through your legs, down into the earth, down into the ground. So you're breathing everything down into those roots. Letting the pelvis become heavy, let everything settle down into where you are. Down into the root, down into the beginning where you started. where there's a connection between what you know yourself to be that is always interconnected with everything else that is down into the roots. And now from those roots start to draw upwards. You imagine them drawing everything energetically up through the roots. So whatever it is that you think that you lack in your life, whatever it is that you think you lack in yourself, pull it up through those roots. So the earth has everything, right? So you breathe in, you pull in whatever you need, whether it's courage, whether it's faith, whether it's patience, whether it's compassion, forgiveness, love, humor, doesn't matter what it is, pull it in. And as you pull it in, feel it drawing all the way up through that spinal column, through the low base of the spine, all the way up through the abdomen, up through the belly. It's like a tree sprouting, a tree growing. Pull it all the way up until it meets that space at the heart. And then just like your veins, your arteries expand out into those branches, those fractals, feel that energy spreading wide across the chest, through the arms, into the fingers, all the way up the throat, into the head. So 
You're pulling all of what you need up through the roots and feeling it flower, feeling it explode, feeling it expand at the heart. Like it bursts from you in all directions, breathes from you in all directions. You don't have to know where it comes from. You just have to feel it move through you in the way that it moves through you. Your breath, your thoughts, your actions. And you will never make it less than it was when it began. It will only become more as it moves through you. It becomes real as it moves through you. It's not abstract, it's real. So faith that whatever it is that you think that you need, you carry it inside. One more breath into those roots, pulling everything you need up and in, flowering at the heart. As you exhale, bring hands together, palm to palm at the heart center. We'll open with the sound of Om, deep breath in. Let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release your hands, maybe switch the cross of your legs if you'd like, but stay seated. And then inhale both arms up to the sky when you're ready. Inhale, deep breath. And then as you uh, exhale, twist to your right. So left hand comes to right knee, right fingertips come behind you. Good, deep breath in, get taller. Then as you exhale, turtle into your lower back. So get your low rib cage a little bit broader as you drop into your seat. And then twist a little deeper, drawing the navel to the spine. Good. And then come all the way back to center. Inhale, both arms up alongside the ears. Twist to your left, right hand to left knee, left fingertips back behind you. Good. Take a full inhale here. Again, getting taller, pulling up through the spine. And then as you exhale, again, try and get your middle rib cage to widen. So you're actually drawing back, almost rounding into your back. Good. And then from your navel, twisting a little deeper. Good, and then come back to center, inhale the arms up to the sky. Twist again to the right, left hand to right knee, right fingertips back behind you. Same thing, breathe in, get taller through the spine. And then as you exhale again, round into your ribs. So move your rib cage back in space first and then navel to spine, twist a little deeper. Good, keep your left hand at your knee this time. Take the right hand up off of the floor, lean to your left. So leaning on the diagonal, right arm over the ear. Good, keep that fullness in your back rib cage, right? This is important because when we back bend, we always assume that we just wanna push the chest forward and compress or collapse that space behind the heart. And we don't, we want that space to stay really open. Good, as you release, take that right hand over to your left knee so that both arms are crossed. Drop your chin towards your chest, straight ahead, round into your back. Good, so you can even, if you're holding those outside edges of your knees or your thighs, bend your elbows wide. Good, so it's like you're pulling against your legs and draw the armpits away from each other. So the shoulders move away from the ears. Good, and then release that, please. Take the arms all the way back up to the sky, deep breath in. Twist to your left, right hand to left knee, left fingertips back behind you. Again, inhaling, getting taller, lengthening the spine. And then as you exhale again, turtle into your middle ribs just a little bit, navel to spine, twist a little deeper. Good, and then keep the right hand where it is. Left arm comes up off of the floor, lean to the right. Good, left arm over the ear. Nice, keep that wideness in your back. Good. Even here, you guys, you can bend that right elbow a little bit more and then really turn that right rib cage under so the left opens. Yeah, that's it. And then as you release the twist, take your left hand to your outer right knee so both arms are crossed. Drop your chin towards your chest, round into your back. Good, and then you can use those hands on the outer legs, bend the elbows, pull so that you have that resistance so that you can widen the front of your shoulders away from your chest or away from your ears. Good. And then slowly release that, come all the way back up. 
Nice job, you guys. Good. Roll forward to hands and knees. Sometimes we warm up for backbending by just backbending, and that doesn't always work so great. <laughs> we actually need to get out of where our habit of pushing forward already is so that we have more availability to really move the spine. So do a little cat and cow, inhaling, lengthening the spine as you come forward, exhaling, rounding into your back. You can even imagine that camel hump if you'd like. <laughs> Good. And then continue inhaling, lengthening, pulling back on your hands. So as you come into that uh, cow position the next time where your belly is dropped, stay there. Good. And then just for a moment, right, press into your hands so you feel your armpits lift towards the ceiling a little more. And then pull back on your hands like you're going to pull your collarbones forward towards the tips of your fingers. Belly is still dropped. So as you drag back on the hands, you get maybe a little bit more length. Good. And then tilt your tailbone up and back even a little bit more and then lift those armpits again and see if you can feel that as your collarbones pull forward and up, the space behind your shoulder blade starts to soften. Good. This is your realistic back bend, right? And then go ahead and release it. Come into the rounded position, dropping your chin towards your chest. Pause there as well. Pressing into the hands, you can feel that full lift of the armpits up towards the ceiling, the full roundness of the upper back, middle back, lower back. So try and find that lift of your hip points off of your thighs, hollow the lowest part of your belly. Good. And then again, still rounded, drag back on your hands. Like you're trying to pull the top of your head to the tips of your fingers. Good. Or the tops of your shoulders are going to pull wide away from your ears. Nice. But your back is still super rounded. Beautiful. Now try to maintain as much of that as you can and come back into that cow position, bringing your chest forward between the arms. Good, tilting the tail up and back, almost like it's coming between the thighs. And as you come into that full dropping the belly, press into your hands, feel your armpits lift. Good, so you don't pretend that you're back bending by bending your elbows. And then exhale, come back into that rounded cat position. Nice, and same thing, in that fully rounded position, pull the shoulders wide away from your ears so it feels like you're drawing those armpits towards the center of your heart, towards the center of your back. Good, and then come all the way back one more time. Inhale, lift up and lengthen. Lifting the armpits up, up, up. Collarbones up, up, up. So don't sink towards the floor here, pull up. The more you pull up and bring those collarbones forward between the arms, that's what's creating the real back bend here. Good, that's what softens behind the heart, not just squeezes behind the heart. And then release back to a neutral spine, please. So somewhere between that arch and curl and stretch your right arm out wide to the right. Slide that arm behind your left wrist, right shoulder comes to the floor, thread the needle. Take the left arm forward towards the top of your mat. Maybe keep the elbow bent so that you can stay up on your fingertips and you have more access to what that shoulder is doing. Good, try and keep weight in both shins. And with that elbow, left elbow bent, you can actually push into your fingers a little bit more and you can feel the strength in that arm, draw that armpit down towards your hip. Good. Nice, you guys. And then if you can take that left arm up to the sky, all the way up, and just pause there for a moment. Don't let it come back behind your shoulder. So bring the hand slightly forward. Good. And then from your armpit, lift up towards the ceiling again. So push into that right arm that's on the floor and reach up through the left fingertips like you're going to touch the ceiling. Good. And then turn that right, sorry, left palm to turn back. Reach around, take that little half bind. So find the outer edge of your right hip, bending the elbow again. Good, and continuing to open from the chest. Nice, you guys. And then slowly unwind completely, bring the arm back down to the floor, come all the way back up to hands and knees. Good, walk your hands straight ahead. So your knees are directly underneath your hips. Walk your hands straight ahead like you're in a modified downward facing dog. So plant the hands. Good, you wanna be far enough forward so that it feels like you are pulling the tops of your thighs back just like you would in down dog. So your hands might even come off of your mat depending on where you're spaced. Good, take your hands a little wider, right and left. Nice, and then same thing as you push into your hands and you feel this lift up of your armpits. Can you draw those armpits towards the center of your back, right to that space where you can imagine the back of your heart is? And then soften. Good, so that hug inward allows the chest to open and the back to relax because the muscular energy is being held in the shoulders. Good, so collarbones up. Nice, tops of thighs back. And like you're gonna melt your heart to the floor. 
There it is. Good. And then walk your hands all the way back in, please, underneath your shoulders. And take your left arm out wide to the left and slide behind your right wrist, thread the needle the other side. And take the right arm forward in front of you. Good. Again, maybe keeping the elbow a little bit more bent so that, again, you have access to what the shoulder is doing. Keep weight in both chins. Lift that left low belly a little higher and wider. There you go. Nice, Perry. Good, you guys. Press into those left fingertips. So again, there's an awareness of that armpit and the armpit moves up towards your hip. Good. And then keep that left arm pressing into the floor. Take your right arm up to the sky, straight up. Good, so again, try not to pull it too far back behind you. You just want it straight up from your shoulder and then reach through those fingertips. So pull that right armpit up towards the ceiling as you press through the left arm. Good, so again, you're creating this more muscular feeling of twist instead of just relying on pushing into the floor to do something. Good, and then turn that, uh, whatever palm that is, right palm to face back and reach around for your outer left hip. So you're taking the bind with that arm. And again, try not to pull back through the elbow, but instead keep lifting that arm bone up towards your ear. Good, the elbow is actually gonna fall forward towards your back. Nice, and then you open again from the shoulder. Awesome, unwind the arm completely, please. Come all the way back up onto hands and knees. Good, and then walk your hands forward again. Knees stay underneath your hips, like you're in that modified downward facing dog. Separate your hands maybe a little wider. Good, and again, you're pressing into your hands, feeling that the armpits are staying lifted, that those armpit, the armpit chest, right? As, you're, as your shoulder blades uh, are a connection to your arms, they draw together like they're making this triangle at the back of your heart. So try and feel that hugging and the openness that happens in your chest as you do that. Good, so keep melting the heart towards the floor. Keep your shins pressing down. A little lift to your low belly. Good, long throat. So Mark, move your hips back just a little bit more. There you go. And then lift your head in line with your arms, but drop through the, yep, drop through the chest. You got it. Good, you guys. One more breath. Softening in. There you go. And then walk yourself all the way back up, hands and knees. Nice job, tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Yeah, heart opening pose means that the back of the heart has to be really open. <laughs> That's the ridiculous thing, is that if we only focus on the chest is we won't get any further in our back bends. We're just gonna keep getting tighter where we're already tight and more vulnerable where we're already vulnerable. Good, right leg comes up and back behind you, down dog split, extend out. Good, bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, don't stack the hip, point that knee straight down towards the floor. Good, straight down, straight down, straight down. Squeeze that heel in towards your butt and then try and lift that thigh just a little bit higher but squeeze the heel in towards your butt. Nice, and then pull back on the hand, start to lift your chest forward and up towards your fingertips. Again, letting that space behind the heart, the shoulder blades draw in and your collarbones lift up and wide. Yeah, it's like plugging all of the pieces into where they already fit. Good, and then release the head, swing that right foot forward between the hands, lunge or step it forward, better way to put it. Good, drop the back knee, use a blanket there if you'd like. Good, take both hands inside the front foot, do some circles with that hip, just move everything around. I've also been reminded recently of how much when we set out for something to heal or we set out for something to move, we set out to change something is that there's often that period of transition in the beginning where everything feels kind of terrible, <laughs> right? Healing often begins with feeling pretty crappy, right? The process itself. So heart opening is a lot like that as we think that like, yeah, it's going to make me feel this way or that way. And I want that blissful feeling, but what comes first and yoga tells us this all the time, what comes first is whatever we've been buried under, whatever we have suppressed in ourselves is that comes often first. 
So it's going to be your own anger. It's going to be your own doubts. It's going to be your own fear. It's going to be your own insecurities. You're going to say, I have everything I need inside. And that part of you that's scared that you don't will say, mm, you're full of shit. <laughs> right? And that's the battle that goes on inside. So if we know that that's coming, that's just part of the faith, right? Is that we know that that voice is there to protect us and also that there's something deeper than that. Come back to stillness, please. Knee over the ankle. Good. Walk your hands to the upper left-hand corner of your mat. Good. Up on fingertips. So again, be really extended so that you're not like resting your weight on your hands. So your hips are still forward of your back knee like you're in Anjaneyasana and you're on your fingertips. Full extended spine. Good. On fingertips. Nice. One more breath. Pull back on the armpit so your chest goes up and wide. Pull back on your hips. And then exhale, bend the elbows, dropping towards the floor any amount. Doesn't matter if they touch the floor or not. Just bend the elbows, drop in. Good. Nice, you guys. And then walk yourself all the way back up, please. Take the left hand to the floor, right arm to the sky, spinal twist. Good. So find the twist first, knee over the ankle. And then tuck your back toes, lift the back knee up. So you come into the same twist. Good, then squeeze your feet towards each other and you're gonna stay in the twist, but you're gonna bring your shoulders up on top of your hips. So it's like a high, high lunge twist. So just reach through those right fingertips, bring yourself all the way up so that your shoulders are over your hips, right hand reaching straight back behind you, left hand forward, come into the standing twist. <clears throat> so you guys gotta bring your shoulders up like you're in high lunge. So the, the left hand has to come off the floor. Just cartwheel your arms up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. From high lunge into high lunge and then come into that same twist. Right hand back behind you, left arm forward. <laughs> twist. <laughs> yes, that way. Exactly. Sorry, the people in the room here cannot follow instructions. Good. And then unwind the arms, inhale both arms to the sky. <laughs> and release the hands down to the floor. My gosh, <laughs> step back downward facing dog. Everybody on Zoom was holding that for like a thousand years. <laughs> really good, you guys. Bend both knees in your down dog, please. Cat cow your spine. <laughs> if you need to bring your knees to the floor instead for cat cow, you can do that. I know, that's a, it's a weird one in our minds to hear that cue if, we, if you don't already know what I'm getting at. I understand. <laughs> I'm not judging you for it. I'm just laughing. <laughs> because just once like, you because once you do it, you'll be like, that wasn't hard at all. Why was that so hard for me to figure out? It wasn't registering. Good. Come back to stillness, please. Hi take your hips high to the sky. Let your heels drop towards the floor. Nice. And then left leg comes up and back behind you. Down dog split. We'll try again on this side. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt. Keep your knee pointing down. Good, and then try and lift that thigh higher from the top of your thigh, it lifts higher. Good, and squeeze that heel in. And then drag back on your hands, lift your chest forward and up. Again, this is like a scorpion variation, right? So you're practicing that shoulder blades draw towards the center of the back of your heart. So your chest opens wide. Good, nice, nice, nice. And then release the head, please. Step your left foot between the hands, lunge. Good, drop the back knee, use a blanket if you'd like. Both hands come inside the front foot, circle the knee. This is the easy part. No one got confused with this. <laughs> Good. All right, faith is what gets us through those moments when we have no idea if what we're doing means anything. <laughs> or if what we're doing is going to get us the things that we want, or if we're ever going to feel different than the way that we feel. Right? Faith is that energy that is underneath all of that. Or you could say it's the energy that ties all of that together. There is something beyond this moment. Good. Come back to stillness, please. Nice, and then walk your hands towards that upper right-hand corner of your mat. And I should say there is something beyond what we interpret to be the 
limits of this moment because of course we're always just right where we are. And there's something beyond the struggle. Good. And whatever is necessary, all of the perseverance, all of the intelligence, all of the awareness as you already have it. Maybe it needs to be practiced, right? Before we started, I was saying that I've been practicing harmonium and so my hand, right, feels all wonky because it's new, new muscles. So awareness is like that. It often feels kind of shitty when you start and you're like, ah, not sure I like this. <laughs> but it moves us past where we were stuck, right? And we start to feel that there's a comfort in that bigness, but not right away, don't be surprised. Take a deep breath, lifting the chest up, pulling back on the hands, and then exhale, bend the elbows, any amount dropping down onto the forearms if you can, if not, just bend the elbows, let your chest, your shoulders come a little deeper in. Good. And then walk your hands back up. Here we go. Plant that right hand, left arm to the sky, spinal twist. <laughs> Good, remember you're pushing into that right hand, reaching through the left wrist. And then tuck your back toes, lift your back knee. Find the twist there, squeezing that left butt cheek in. Good. And then squeezing your feet together, cartwheel your arms up so it's like you're reaching your left hand straight back to the wall behind you and the right arm is going to be reaching straight forward you're still in the twist there you go yep you got it and so if you wanted to you could take that right hand just back down to the floor and the left arm up to the sky and it's the same twist right and now bring it all the way back up where your shoulders are over your or over your hips there you go that's all i wanted <laughs> and then unwind the arms, inhale them all the way up to the sky, release the hands down to the floor, step back, downward facing dog. It's so awkward. I guess I can cancel that MRI of the brain now since I got the second time. That's right. Slide forward to plank pose, please. Lower down slow to the belly. Good. Forehead to the floor, point your toes back behind you, take your hands back behind your head, elbows wide. Good, so you're keeping your feet anchored to the floor here, front of the thighs drawing forward. Good, begin to lift up head, neck and chest like you're bringing your chest forward towards the top of your mat and you're keeping your gaze straight down. So the head pushes up into the hands, good. Squeeze those elbows just a little bit towards each other. So it's like you're hollowing the armpits but the chest is lifting up, throat is lifting up. Keep your feet rooted to the floor. Good, try to access that place where your thighs are pulling up and in towards your lower belly and your armpits are pulling to the top of your mat. Good, and then slowly release. I know that's a lot of work. <laughs> Good, you guys. And then walk your hands back into Bhujangasana, cobra arms, and nice and wide, so a wide-armed cobra. So move your hands further out. So middle ribs, but walk them out, maybe even off of your mat, come up on your fingertips, so a wide-armed cobra. Good, and then again, begin to lift up head, neck and chest, but I want that same feeling of the front of your thighs pulling forward into your low belly. Good, so that as you rise up, it's not because you pushed your pelvis into the floor, right? I want it to be because you're drawing your armpits forward and your chest, your sternum angles forward and up. So you're working that rotation of your shoulder blades. Good, so you can push into your hands, but make sure that you are pulling forward through the front of your thighs. Good. Yeah, so it's not a pushing down, it's a sliding forward. Beautiful, one more breath, low ribs in, but collarbones up and wide, and then release. Nice job, you guys. Good, take a moment on your belly, maybe turn one cheek to the side or make a pillow with your hands. Good. Many of the teachers who brought yoga to the West have said, and I don't want to quote any specific one because I don't know that I can properly, but I know that it's often been said, and I want to say that it's Swami Satchidananda who was a big proponent of this, where he says, don't just believe anything a teacher tells you. He says, look for yourself. 
right? Examine for yourself this inner technology, right? The inner temple of the body or the inner temple of the soul, the mind. He says, examine it yourself, experiment. Yoga is a science. So yes, we have to have faith, but he says, but it's not a religion, it's not faith. It's not blind faith where we just assume that what we've been told is just the way that it is. Turn your cheek to the other side. It says, you have to go in and experience it. And then when a teacher says the word compassion, you know what it means because you know how it moves through you. When a teacher says inner peace, you know what it means because you know what it feels like to move through you. Right? So we're no longer reaching for this abstract thing that we have no concept, real concept of. But we're internalizing and we're taking that internal reality and we're seeing what it really is. And it's so much more than we give it credit for. So we have to have faith that there is something beyond what we already think. Otherwise, we'd never even try. Because, but don't let your faith be blind. Experience it yourself. Experience it now. Don't wait. And this is the kind of faith that, to me, camel is, is a representation of, right? Or it can be this symbol. And what you have is already inside of you, but if you don't access it, it's just like a hump on your back. <laughs> what good is it if you don't draw from it? Turn your forehead back to the floor, please. Good, bend both knees, kick your heels in towards your butt, walk your hands back alongside your rib cage again, cobra arms. Good, pressing your thighs down to the floor. So not the tops of your thighs, but towards your knees, pressing down into the floor. So find that downward energy. As you press down towards your knees, your butt's gonna pop up a little bit. Good. So now I want you to draw those hip points forward towards the front of your mat, like you're lengthening your tail backwards. Excuse me, pull back on your hands and rise up into Bhujangasana. Again, like you're gonna drag yourself along the floor. Lift your sternum up, keep that pressure pushing down at your knees. Don't let the front of your thighs push into the floor. Draw them forward and up. Good. I know it's going to feel so awkward and weird to do it that way, <laughs> but try not to push the pelvic bones into the floor. Pull forward and up. Good. Like you're going to drag yourself. One more breath. Squeeze those heels in. Nice. And then go ahead and release, please. Beautiful. Flip over onto your back. Good. Bend your knees. Place a block underneath your sacrum. any height you'd like. Or maybe let's do this, put it on its lowest setting just so you can feel that. Good. And then set yourself so that your heels are directly underneath your knees. And you're like, oh, they are, aren't they? Mm -mm. Walk your heels back. <laughs> Good. And feet as wide as your hips. And you're like, they are, aren't they? Mm -mm. Mark, take yours a little wider. Good. Nice, you guys. And then pressing into your feet here, again, energetically, you're dragging back. So it's gonna feel again, like you're trying to pull your low back off of the block because you're trying to bring your butt towards your heels. So I don't want you to actually fall off the block, but use that energy of your legs, drag back on your heels, feel like your knees are pulling towards the tips of your toes. Keep your butt on the block. Good, and try and actually soften your groins down. So it's gonna feel like you're actually arching your lower back a little bit but I want your thigh bones to get really deep into the hip socket. So don't squeeze your butt here. Relax your butt, draw the thigh bones down and in, drag back on your heels. Yeah, like you're arching your lower back, like your tailbone is gonna just fall off of the block. Good. And then release that effort. Uh-huh. <laughs> nice. And then lift your butt, try and turn the block to its next highest setting. Again, making sure that it's still comfortably underneath the sacrum. So Perry, I would maybe turn the block so that it's uh, horizontal. There you go. Good. And I know if, and if this is a challenge for where your body's at, then just to hang out here for a couple of breaths, maybe don't do anything else. If it feels like too much, go back to the lower setting, but try to stay here for a couple of breaths. And then I want you to do almost the same thing. I want you to press down into your feet and I want you to engage the legs. So drag back on your heels and get that little arch into your lower spine. So again, the thigh bones are pulling up into the pelvis and the groins are rotating down. Good, 
right? We use this cue all the time. And this is one of the positions where I think you can really feel what the heck we're talking about when we say groins moving down and in. So it's this feeling, right? Groins moving down and in. Notice what it isn't. It's not pushing the pelvis forward. Good. Legs are engaged, but the thighs are not popping forward. Nice, release the effort. Good. And then try, again, if it feels like it's too much, you can stay where you are, but try, even if it's just for a breath or two, come up on your tippy toes and turn that block to its tallest setting underneath your sacrum. You might have to stay on your tippy toes and that's okay. Again, it might feel like a lot. So stay on your tippy toes, keep the back nice and engaged or keep the legs nice and engaged. And if it feels like it's too much, take a breath there and then come back down to the setting that we were just at. Good. And then same thing, either up on tippy toes, just stay where you are, hugging the knees towards each other or start to drag back on your heels and draw those thigh bones in. Find that little arch to your lower back. It's a little harder to do in this position, right? Because your hips are so high. It's like you're doing camel pose, but you're upside down. <laughs> but I want you to have this feeling that you can still try and draw those thigh bones in. You don't have to give in to that push forward through the pelvis. You can keep the groins drawing down and in, even in a big back bend. And it comes from your legs. So I want you to remember this feeling. Good. And then release the effort. Come up on your tippy toes, move that block out from underneath you. Slowly come all the way down. Pause with the knees bent and the feet flat. If that felt like a lot on the lower back, separate the feet, let your knees fall inward. Good, try not to go straight for a pulling the knees in towards the chest. Let the spine settle first. Good. Nice, you guys. So whenever we're practicing for a pose, it's always good to do the positions that mirror the pose that you're trying to get deeper into or that you're trying to understand. So that variation of bridge pose, right, is basically taking you through an upside down camel. Same thing as doing that bent knee cobra is you're working the same energy, the same directional energy as camel just on your belly. You could also do bow pose and things like that, but that locks your um, shoulders a little bit more. Good. Heel toe your feet back to neutral, please. So feet underneath the hips again. Good. Come into bridge pose. So you can keep your arms straight or bend your elbows into robot arms. Pressing down into your feet first, drag backwards on your heels. So that same work of your legs, pull your butt towards your heels, feel your groins moving down and then press into the arms and feel those armpits hug towards the back of your heart and lift from there, that that's what lifts you up. Drag back on your heels, knees move towards the tips of your toes. So really get into that, knees towards tips of toes. And then as you get that full length on your lower back, then try and pull your sternum up towards the top of your head at the same time that you pull your butt to your heels. So it's not one or the other. It's got to be both. Good. Knees to the tips of your toes. Don't forget about that. I know. And you're like, but then I can't get into as big of a back bend. Keep your groins rotating down. Uh-huh. I know. Fight with it a little bit. And then relax with it. Good, and then slowly release. Again, coming down one vertebra at a time, one piece of the spine at a time. Again, pausing with the knees bent, the feet flat. Good, and then keep the feet where they are, bend your elbows and place your hands alongside your ears as though you were going to do wheel pose. Good, so palms flat to the floor alongside your ears. They can be as wide as they need to be. Again, if this is a tough shoulder position, move your hands wider and let them turn at whatever angle they need to because you're not coming into wheels. So don't worry about it. Uh, so Perry, still try to have the fingers pointing towards the shoulders. Just take the hands as wide as they need to go. And then you guys, you're squeezing your elbows towards each other. Good, so then you move your hands wider, but your elbows pull in. Yeah, I know it's an awkward position. <laughs> <laughs> so try and hug those elbows towards each other, squeeze in, and then push into the hands any amount that you can. Keep your butt on the ground. Yep. 
and push into the hands and see if you can feel a lift of just the upper body. So your lower butt, your butt stays on the floor, lower back stays on the floor. You're just pushing into your hands to try and feel a lift through your armpits. That's it. Good. Pull those elbows towards your low rib cage as you push into the hand. So it's like you're squeezing the elbows down. I know. <laughs> Squeeze those elbows in, Perry. Just work on that. Good. And then slowly release you guys. I know that's, wasn't, that's an awkward position. So if that position is one that's not comfortable for you, totally get it. But if you can get into that position and work that muscle muscular energy of your shoulders, it's a great one for opening up for camel. Good. Draw the knees in towards your chest, please. Good. Bring your forehead up to meet your knees. So curl into a ball for a moment. So again, rounding the back. Good, and then slowly release, keeping the right knee in towards your chest, extend the left leg down towards the floor, come into a spinal twist. So your right knee comes over to the left. Good. And then bend your left knee, the leg that's straight, take the heel in towards your butt and reach down to find the foot or the ankle. So again, the deepness of the twist with the right leg doesn't matter that much. I want you to try and find the quad stretch as best you can. Twisting quad stretch. Of course, camel pose, if you don't actually get a little bit of a stretch through the thighs and into the quads, it's going to just be a difficult pose. <laughs> and our, the important thing is that when we run into those moments where we're like, oh, this thing that I just tried to do was difficult the first time, that must mean that I am terrible, right? We watch that judgment that because something wasn't easy, we assume it's never going to be possible for it to be easy, right? Sometimes it's simply the understanding of what's going to make a situation be more skillful. That's how we go searching in ourselves and say, oh, I have that. I just need to cultivate it. I just need to awaken it. I just need to pay attention to it. This doesn't have to be as hard as it feels. Good. Slowly release that quad stretch, please. So straightening the left leg. Good. And then come all the way back to center, hugging the right knee in towards your chest. You got it. Good. And then hold behind the thigh. Please extend your right heel up towards the ceiling. So hamstring stretch on that side. Good. And then keeping the right hand holding that leg, you can let your left arm go out wide to the left, let the right leg drop open wide to the right, keep your left hip rooted to the floor. So again, this is the point of this is, you know, stretching through the groin, important in camel. Good, so keep the left hip down, right leg goes wide. Nice. And then come all the way back up. Good, squeeze that knee in towards your chest. Good, and then send that right leg down to the floor. Bring your left knee in. Come into your twist. So bring the knee across your body over to the right. And again, that knee does not have to come to the floor. You can just agree with yourself that it's not necessary to try to reach for the deepest twist possible. Just twist. And then bend your right knee, the straight leg. Kick your heel in towards your butt and reach down to try and find the foot or the ankle for that quad stretch. And again, if reaching for the foot is not a possibility, that's okay. Still bend the knee, take the heel in and just extend that left arm as wide to the left as it's going to go, All right? Try and draw the low navel in and feel as though you're almost pushing your butt back towards that left heel. So the quad stretching heel, push your butt back towards it. So this is again, softening the groin. Good. Faith, I feel like this in this moment and this moment maybe feels very weak. Feels like there's a lot of insecurity. It feels like there's a lot of pain, like a lot of doubt, a lot of whatever. That's okay. Because you are uniquely suited to face those things and move through them. You have the unique capability of living your life. Everything you need, you are carrying it inside, but you have to be willing and able 
to draw on it. That's why we're asked to do this inner exploration in yoga. It says, discover what you've got in there because it's not just all the laundry list of things that you think are wrong with you. Faith, I go looking for more because I truly believe that there is more, even if I can't see it in this moment, if it feels like it's too far away. I search anyway. Slowly release that quad stretch, please. Straightening the leg, coming back to center. Left knee comes in towards the chest. Good. Contemplate if you liked that better or if, you know, doing dancer pose a thousand times seemed like a better option. <laughs> Hold the hands behind the thigh. I considered that. Straighten the left leg, please. Pressing the heel up towards the ceiling. Good. And then keeping the left hand on that leg with the right arm go out wide to the right. Let the left leg start to drop open wide to the left. Keep your right hip rooted to the floor. So again, don't let everything roll to the left. Good. Make sure those right toes, the leg on the floor are staying straight up and down. There you go, Beth. The only one whose feet I can see. <laughs> And then come all the way back up to center. Nice, there's Elise, there's everybody's feet. Hug the knee back in towards your chest. Good. And then pull the right knee in as well. Again, both knees in towards the chest. Beautiful, roll forward and back on your spine. Bring yourself all the way up to sit. Good, facing the front of your mat. Good, come onto your shins, please. So like you're sitting in Virasana. So if you need a block between your feet, you can use a block or a blanket rolled between the feet. So the knees are pointing straight ahead. Hips are between your heels. So again, if you cannot sit with your hips coming to the floor between your heels, use a prop, but widen your heels enough so that your butt could come to the floor between them. So feet even wider, Mark, feet even wider, Perry. If you are sitting on your heels, you're missing the depth of Virasana, right? So hips to the floor between your heels or hips to a prop between your, between your feet. Good. So again, find yourself softening the groins down, finding the seat. Nice. And then start to walk your, again, this might be enough. If this is enough, stay where you are. If you can walk your hands back behind you any amount, so walking your fingertips back, lifting the chest, walking your fingertips back, lifting the chest. Good, some of you might be able to walk far enough back that it feels pretty natural to be able to bend your elbows, come down to your forearms. Good, and again, you're keeping your shins anchored to the floor. If your knees start to fly up, you've gone too far. Good, and for some of you, you can come all the way back flat onto your back. If you have a block underneath your seat or need a block underneath your seat, you don't do that. <laughs> you stay where you are. Good. Don't even attempt it because you can't lay on your back very well in that position. It's, it's going to be overstretching quads and back. Good. You want to go back as far as you can so you find that full stretch through the front of the thighs, the front of the pelvis. Nice. A couple more breaths where you are. This is, again, just preparation for feeling the length of your spine through your quads. Good. And if you are all the way on your back and can comfortably bring your hands into that wheel position, then you could go ahead, plant your hands with the elbows bent and lift your hips and shoulders up into a wheel position. How hilarious, Perry, that you can do that here, but before it was such a <laughs> struggle. Good. Beautiful. And then slowly release it. Find your way all the way back up from wherever you are. And again, if you're at home and you need help, you're going to have to call for someone at home. <laughs> Good. Come all the way up and then come forward onto hands and knees, please. Slow. Come into downward facing dog. Yeah, it's definitely one of those I've fallen and I can't get up moments. I'm a camel and I can't get up. <laughs> Don't say that. Downward facing dog. If you say that to 911, they're going to think that you're prank calling them and no one will, <laughs> no one will arrive. Who says that, right? Find your down dog, pedal your feet. Good. 
Good. And then go ahead and walk your feet forward towards your hands. Beautiful. Take a block between the upper thighs. Good. Block between the upper thighs. And then you're bending your knees, dropping your seat into chair, keeping this awareness that as you bend your knees, you're drawing those thighs in and back. So you're still trying to draw the groins back. So drop your hips, take your arms up alongside your ears, chair pose. Good. So you feel, right? Groins moving back, but moving back, softness at the tops of your thighs. I want you to come all the way up to stand just to the point where you are not pushing forward through the front of your thighs. So come up to stand. Don't push forward, pull up. Pull your thighs up and into your pelvis. So they never get hard at the front of your thigh creases. Good. And then bend the knees again, drop back into chair, get really deep into the thigh creases, butt back. Nice. And just for comparison, come all the way up to stand, all right? Straighten your legs and let yourself lock if that's what you do and feel that push forward through your thighs, right? So you can feel it happen, right? That's what we want to avoid. So again, soften that. So it's going to feel like your butt moves back in space. Bend your knees deep again. Go back into chair. Hug that block. Good. Keep the hug of the legs. Start to come up to stand again, pressing through your heels. When you get to that point, when you want to push the thighs forward, instead lift your hip points up. Pull your thighs up into your low belly. Pull up. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. That's it. One more time, bend your knees back into chair. Good, take your hands back behind you, interlace your fingers, shrug your shoulders, your armpits up towards your ears. And then again, hug backwards and notice that as soon as you squeeze back there, your ribs pop forward. So pull your ribs back and in. Good, and then drop your head, take your arms up overhead any amount as you straighten the legs, keep hugging the block between the thighs. Good. Again, you want those armpits engaged, shoulder blades drawing towards the center of the back, but not squeezing that center of the spine, but hugging from the outside edges, hugging. Nice. Release the hands down to the floor, please. Good. Just for fun, keep the block between the, th the thighs. Jump yourself back to plank or waddle yourself back to plank. <laughs> Either one works. <laughs> nice, Virginia. Good. Lower all the way down, slow to your belly with the block between the thighs. Point your toes back behind you. Rise up cobra with the block between the thighs. Again, without pushing the hip points into the floor, draw them forward. Good. And then downward facing dog with the block between the thighs. Don't lose it. Good. Nice, you guys. And then go ahead and drop down to hands and knees. Still block between the thighs. Good. If you need cushion underneath your knees, make sure that you have a blanket there, but otherwise walk your hands back so that you can take your hands to your hips, preparing for Ustrasana, block between the thighs. <laughs> so again, whatever, <laughs> whatever you need underneath your knees, make sure you have it. But I want you to remember, because the exercises that we just did, nothing changes with the legs coming into camel. It's not any different. It's the same feeling as as you hug that block and you could here push your hips forward, see what that feels like to really push through your pelvis and arch the lower back, right? And you're like, yeah, that feels like a back bend, mm -mm. right? <laughs> Draw the butt back so that your groins get soft, the front of the thighs get soft, that pressure comes out of your sacrum. Pull up through your thighs. Yep, as your thighs pull up, you can keep your feet, your toes tucked or untucked here, whatever you like. Take your hands to your lower back. Good. And hinge first. So that means your whole body stays in one line, hinge backwards. So your thighs are moving back. It's a big quad activator, right? So as you hinge back, you're pushing your low back into your hands. Don't let those groins push forward. So Mark, take the arch out of your back and move everything back. Hinge. Thighs move back like you're going to bring your butt to your heels. There you go. Nice, you guys. And then bring it all the way back up. Yeah, so it's a lot harder than just leaning backwards, right? It's the whole body moving back. So your thighs really have to work. Good, try it one more time like that. Just hinging, hinging backwards as though you're gonna bring your butt back towards your heels. And then letting yourself come all the way back to upright. Maybe one more time, hinging backwards. Keep your, your low back pressing into your hands so that you are actively not pushing your thighs forward. And then navel to spine, come all the way back up. Good, I know your abdominals had to work there, right? Now take your hands back behind your head. Good, 
just like that first crocodile pose, right? Press your head into your hands, hollow your armpit. So bring your elbows slightly forward. Good, draw your low rib cage in, lift the tops of your thighs, begin to hinge backwards. Again, move your butt back in space, move everything back in space. So hinge back like you're gonna lay back in a beach chair. Good, and then once you've hinged, start to lift your sternum up towards the sky, but keep your neck completely neutral. So take the top of your chest, rotate it up towards the sky, rotate it up and pull. Like there's a string at your sternum pulling up. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up and press down into your shins. Lift up and lean back, lift up and lean back, lean, lift up and lean back. Good, now hold that lift and just let your arms hang alongside you. You got it, chest up, thighs back, chest up. Let your arms hang, good. And then navel to spine, come all the way up. I know, <laughs> the camel is so much work. Good, give yourself a break. Sit back into either Virasana, child's pose. I know, I made you stay there for a long time too. I acknowledge. Yeah, chest up, really pull through the sternum. Up, 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 up. That's it, yep, excellent. Right? This is this is the thing, right? When you do camel in class, how often are you just dropping into it? You're pushing your hips forward, you're yanking your shoulder blades together, and you're forcing your hands back to find your feet. And then once you do, you just lock, right? And what if you went through life that way where you never looked for anything more and you just said, well, this is going to hurt me later, but here we go. <laughs> this is the only way I know how to do it. So here we go. Or you could stay in that state that is maybe uncomfortable as your back gets stronger or your thighs open more. You can maybe acknowledge that doing camel with blocks instead of reaching for your heels is the way to go. You could keep exploring and say, there's a way that I can help this body and this mind find ease in the life that I'm living because I'm the only one who knows how to do it. And I'm the only one who can. And the faith is simply that if you keep going, you will find where the ease is. And it's not always where everything feels good. It's often first where things feel not good. We move through that. Faith. Walk yourself back up, please. So your last official camel pose, you can do it with the block between the thighs if you want. I think it's a nice reminder, but you certainly don't need to. If in this pose you habitually find that it is difficult to reach your heels or that it's a struggle once you have them to not lock your thighs, I would prefer you use both of your blocks placed alongside the outside of your ankles so that you can reach your hands to your blocks instead of your feet. I would have them at their tallest setting so you don't have to reach far. Good but whatever your choice, right? Make your choice for how you want to do your camel pose. So again, feet can be flat or you can tuck the toes, whatever helps you feel like your legs are the most engaged. Start with the hands wherever you want. They can be at the lower back behind the head. They can be straight alongside you wherever you want them to be. But begin to, again, tops of thighs back. Don't forget everything just because you don't have the block there. Hinge backwards, whole body moves back, angles back and then start to pull your sternum up towards the ceiling. As the sternum lifts up and those shoulder blades cradle the back of the heart, pull up, thighs up and in. Let the hands hang back behind you, lift that sternum up and let the hands drape down to your blocks or find your heels or keep your hands at your lower back. Good, keep that feeling of drawing your ribs in and your thighs up, not forward, but up. Chest up, chest up, chest up, collarbones to the sky and a long throw. If your head tips back naturally, that's fine, but don't yank it back. And then navel to spine, come all the way up. You gotta hug those thighs to the last second your thighs have to work. Burn. Yes, and then release hips back to your heels, bring your forehead to the floor. I know. And this is why we often don't work in camel because it's a lot of quad work and nobody likes quad work. <laughs> that burning sensation, oh. 
Nobody likes it. That's not true. There are some people who really enjoy enjoy the feeling of their muscles burning, but you know. Hold your ankles, please, or keep your hands alongside you. Roll up onto the crown of your head, lift your hips, round your back. They call this hair pose, like the rabbit, not the hair on your head. Good, but rounding, releasing the spine, doing the opposite of what you just did. Good, and then slowly release, please. Nice job, and then bring yourself all the way back up. Good, come to sit on your butt, bring the bottoms of the feet together, let your knees drop wide, Baddha Konasana. Good, give yourself a longer diamond with the legs if it feels like your lower back wants just a little bit more support. And then let yourself fold forward any way that you'd like. You can hold the ankles or stretch the arms out. If you wanna thread the arms underneath the knees, you can do that. Breathe as low into your spine as you can. And we forget that back bending doesn't start from your back, or that doesn't start from the top of your back, it starts from your legs. If you don't have a stable root, you don't have a stable connection to your legs, back bending becomes impossible because what are you extending your spine out from? And similarly, we can say that all of those big emotions that we experience through the heart, the love that we say that we're seeking in yoga, the unconditional, it only becomes real for us when it is associated with the world that we live in, the root, it's associated with your actual relationships, your actual interactions. You can't just live in this abstract space. It has to become real, which often means it becomes imperfect. And through that, we start to realize perfection in the way things are instead of looking for it to be something else. This is why we have to explore. Slowly unwind, bring yourself all the way back out. Nice job. And then turn yourselves around, find your way onto your back. So if you're in the room, they're turning around. You guys can be whatever direction you want at home. <laughs> Wherever you want to be. Coming onto your backs. Good. Just doing one more little stretch, bringing the knees in towards your chest. Good. Maybe taking the right thigh on top of the left, separating the feet, reaching for the ankles or the shins. Again, just to release the outer hips. Believe it or not, a lot of outer hip stability required for a camel, if you didn't notice that. That squeezing the block uses a lot of outer hip. And if we, even if we don't have the block, we're meant to still have that hugging energy stabilizes the legs. Good, release and switch, take the other leg on top. And then slowly release again, hugging the knees in. If you feel you want a final spinal twist, feel free to take it. Otherwise, just bring the forehead up to meet the knees. And then slowly release. It might feel really lovely to let the knees drop wide and place your blocks underneath your knees in a supine Baddha Konasana. Might feel very lovely to have your legs straight in front of you and a bolster or a rolled blanket underneath your knees. but find something in your Shavasana that allows you to feel softer. Softer in your mind that feels maybe a little bit more curious.
gently bring the awareness back to your breath. Letting the body begin to stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw the knees in towards the chest, roll to the right side. And take a moment before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. And bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. You know, if you took a camel out of its natural environment and just looked at it, you would probably say, how bizarre, what a strange creature. Why would it do this? Why would it look like that? So weird. But when you see it in its environment and you understand this is why it is the way that it is, then you see the magnificence, the brilliance, that it is uniquely, perfectly suited for the life that it is living. And you are exactly the same. If you look at yourself from outside eyes that maybe are not seeing the whole picture of you as you might say, oh, why would I do that? Why would I speak that way, act that way, be that way? What's wrong with me that I'm not this other way? When you come from that place where you are looking for what is the unique design of this body and this mind and this soul, and that you are uniquely designed to do well in the life that you are living, is you start to see that there's a magnificence to the way that you operate. Even the things that you think are your greatest problems, there's a magnificence to the way that they operate. So you keep exploring until you see the wholeness of that and the faith is what keeps us going in that exploration so that we don't stop every time we stumble over something and say, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense to me. It looks kind of gross, feels kind of gross. So we need the faith for us, so we keep going, right? We've been promised that there is that state of wholeness that you began from and that you are never separate from. But you have to feel it through you, otherwise it's never real. So start to experience yourself as that. And it becomes more real every breath, every thought, every day. And like the camel, you will see yourself designed perfectly for the life that you're living. We start with faith, one step forward, one more step, one more step, keep exploring. You have everything that you need. You keep looking inside yourself until you find it. And you keep looking for what is the way that I can use this, not abstract, but real. And close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste. Thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your night, great rest of your week until I see you again. Heads up, tomorrow is the um, cookies and storytelling with Neil. So if you're interested in that, make sure you sign up. Um, and then coming up, I think on, what is it, Sunday? Cheryl has her uh, losing your inhibitions workshop that she's doing at her house. So if you have interest in that, details are up on the, on the website. Take a look, make sure you sign up. And anything else that I'm forgetting, just look on the website. <laughs> I'm sure that there are things that I'm forgetting. Um, don't forget Tuesday nights, the butterfly language talks um, are always really fun. So that's at eight o'clock on Tuesday nights, uh, regular class thing, just sign up and come here. Great conversations, be part of great conversations and all the other good things too. I can't remember them, so I won't keep you. <laughs> Have a good night. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.